Good morning, everybody. Oh, good afternoon, good evening, good Wednesday, wherever you are in the world. My name is Rob. Welcome to the VidIQ weekly Welcome live stream. The VidIQ weekly Welcome live stream. The already got problems there because I'm uh, running the. Uh, what a disaster start. Let's just do this. Jeremy's <laughs> laughing in the background. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Yeah, I, just, I said to Jeremy two minutes before we start the live stream, I'm getting really nervous in case anything goes wrong. And straight away it did because I had the live stream running in the background, which then interfered with the speakers. Hello, my name is Rob, and what we are talking about today is trying to stay safe on YouTube because there's been a lot of stories going around very recently uh, from new community guidelines to comment demonetizations to people's giveaways being demonetized or removed from the platform and that's a big topic that we're going to talk about in the first section of this live stream here on vidIQ. My name is Rob. Welcome as always to what we do here on a Tuesday where we talk about a big topic on YouTube as well as auditing your channels and as always I'm joined by our resident skateboarding geek, old guy, garden enthusiast, the person who suggests opening a channel and and doing videos about planes because you'll get so much affiliate linkage from that. Jeremy Vest, <laughs> welcome to the house. We were in London last week. Quickly sum up how that was and we do apologize that we couldn't do a live stream last week because of that. Yeah, London was great. We got to, there's a lot of vidIQ creators out there, a lot, the and uh, we got to meet a lot of them. Uh, two of our vidIQ users, Genter and Toto, helped us out in our booth, and we want to say thank you to them. We know we're, they're watching today. You guys rock, and uh, man, London was was great. There's a lot uh, of absolutely thumbs up to everybody involved in that. And uh, hello to you, of course, who couldn't make it, of course, if you weren't in the London area. And the shout outs do begin now with the people such as like a fox thinking how rave rave 957 rebuilding me at san di guardia that is a long username there the cox clan pub g raise whore mike hike and now jeremy's going to introduce three people because he's absolutely terrible at doing this <laughs> Hyperceva, K Travels, and Wild Wolves. There you go. That's Jeremy's contribution to the <laughs> shout outs. I am a tub. TJ Challenge, your boy Chris, the family show of four. Uh, more Duplicator, Minor Bro, Spencer Nursery. All of you, welcome to the vidIQ live stream this week. Now, I just want to give you a fair warning here. Uh, one of the perils of live streaming at home is that sometimes you can get. Um, I guess you can have interferences which are beyond your control. And I saw a notice on our apartment block today saying that there is going to be some fire inspections in the building at some point within the next hour. So I have to keep an eye out for the door going. And if I do, I'm going to leave you in the very capable hands of Jeremy until that gets sorted. No idea when it's going to happen. I will just suddenly disappear. So uh, Jeremy, good luck with that when whenever that happens. All right. Let's now talk about, first of all, these uh, big stories that are happening recently on YouTube. And the first one I want to focus on is something that was uh, planned uh, to begin with, but has been overtaken by so many other stories. And this is YouTube making changes to their community guidelines in terms of how penalties are distributed uh, in that uh, in that area. And before you may get strikes and you may get penalties that were completely different to uh, how that may be um, interpreted by different video creators, like you might get a 90-day uh, live stream suspension or you may not be able to post videos for a couple of weeks. And it was all very confusing. So what YouTube are doing is trying to streamline all of these penalties. And this is a blog from YouTube, which I'm going to leave a uh, link in the um, video description for if you want to check out the full article but I just highlighted a few areas uh, which are really important for you so if you do break community guidelines and this is for community guidelines not copyright strikes that's a completely different system if you breach a community guideline some good news here is that the first time you do it you will not get an official strike per se you will get a warning from YouTube and then they will remove the offending content so I think Jeremy from our point of view that seems like a really good idea for video creators who sometimes step over the line without even realizing yeah I think I mean fundamentally if you're if you're good on YouTube you should be fine <laughs> with these new strikes ah now did you hear that that was a really loud beep and I hope I didn't just burst your ear 
ear bulbs there, ear bulbs, ear drums, uh, by what just happened there. But now I'm expecting a knock on the door. I will uh, disappear if I need to. But anyway, we'll move on for the time being. So this uh, first warning um, is that along the lines of, according to YouTube, 98% of video creators never breach guidelines. But the the people of the people who do. 94% of those creators will never break these guidelines again. So it's kind of like really narrowing down the potential failures. Like we've got 150 people watching right now. So three of you may break the community guidelines and then probably none of you would ever do that again. In following that, uh, they're also making a penalty for violating community guidelines the same wherever it happens. While most strikes result from videos, community guidelines also covers content on YouTube, stories, custom thumbnails, and links to other websites. So you have uh, three strike zones. So if you get that first warning, and then if you breach the community guidelines again, you will get a first strike, which results in a one-week freeze on the ability to upload any new content. So that might be community posts, uh, uploading videos, posting YouTube stories, but it doesn't prevent you from posting comments on other videos as far as I'm aware. And that strike lasts for 90 days. Strike two, you get a two week um, freeze on posting content, still a 90 day cooldown period. And then if you have a third strike, that is channel termination. You are of course able to appeal that, uh, but I think generally speaking after Wow. After four um, ch uh, f four strikes, I think that's pretty fair from YouTube. I mean, Jeremy, any, any more to add there? Or do you think that's fairly uniform, good strategy from YouTube? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, the fact that you can appeal um, and you they're going to tell you what you did wrong yeah. so you have a chance to correct it, I think it's pretty darn fair. I, I don't think there's any problems at all. And, you know, creators that... You know, the the only fear would be if they do something weird and millions of channels automatically get flagged for some yeah, reason. Because, absolutely, yeah. You know, we don't know their rules. They say the community guidelines are clear, but it's kind of clear as mud to me. Yeah. You know, we don't really know what they think. So as long as they're giving you, okay, let's say something happens and a million people get these guidelines. As long as you're able to fix it, I think they're being pretty fair here. Absolutely. People are asking me, what am I currently burning in the kitchen? If you are late, uh, the fire alarm system is being tested. So I do apologize. Uh, please um, visit your um, doctor after uh, this live stream. Uh, and yeah, I think YouTube can make mistakes. That's my alarm, so I'm going to have to go now. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Jeremy, uh, fill in somehow. I don't know, just do some shout outs. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> See you later. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about today is this fake engagement policy uh, concept. And essentially what YouTube has come out with today is they basically said that content that links or promotes the third party services that artificially inflate views like subscribers or metrics are not allowed on YouTube. Um, so basically if you're, if you're using uh a service to get more subs or views artificially. If you're linking to services that promote third-party uh, view count, subscriber gaming websites or services, or if you're doing sub for sub, YouTube's going to start cracking down on you. You know, we always say like sub for sub is a really bad idea and it never really works. And you never see big channels doing sub for sub. Well, now with this fake engagement policy, they're really putting their, their foot down and they're making it black and white saying this is not allowed. So I do think that there's a lot of black hat companies out there and a lot of black hat people doing bad stuff. Um, there's companies that do these things called spinner channels and all this crazy black hat stuff. Hopefully a lot of those people that do bad things on YouTube go away. Uh, people that are selling subscribers and you um and doing crazy stuff i i just don't think there's really a place for it and it's not needed jeremy you are a legend i am back sorry about that look at and look at this in my absence in my absence 30 more people have joined the live stream so maybe jeremy you should do this more often okay sorry jeremy what were you talking about there 
We were just talking about the fake engagement policies. Yes. All right. Awesome. Brilliant segue. That's what I was going to look at next. So okay. YouTube have um, updated, or I think it's become more transparent now, their fake engagement policy. And this is along the lines of promoting third-party services or trying to artily, artificially inflate uh, your um, views, subscribers, likes. Uh, so it says here, I've already I've marked this, and again, this is available in the video description. Content that links to pr or promotes third-party services that artificially inflate views, likes, subscribers, or metrics is not allowed on YouTube. And that can basically translate to something along the lines of giveaways. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of maybe Gleam or enter the giveaway on YouTube, especially when people are giving out like PS Network cards and like a free console and stuff. And there's a classic example of this that I found on Twitter uh, by uh, the naughty, No Naughty Allowed uh, Twitter handle, which is a fantastic Twitter name. And um, they were highlighting here that Erica Griffin, who is a very prominent tech channel, had one of their videos flagged, sorry again about the beeping, uh, one of their videos flagged for a, it looks like a Nintendo Switch 3DS giveaway. So even channels of high standing with YouTube are now feeling the effects of YouTube clamping down. And a couple of months ago, YouTube talked about really strengthening their community guidelines and be being more aggressive, and that seems to be the case. So, folks, if you are doing giveaways and things, YouTube is keeping a keen eye on that, and they do not want all of these, I guess, um, underhand ways of making you get more views and subscribers. They just don't want that uh, on the platform. Uh, any more to add there, Jeremy, or did you pretty much cover it in my absence? I pretty much covered it. We're good. Okay, awesome. So, uh, yeah, I just want to, uh, the next screen I just want to quickly show you was the community guidelines themselves. Uh, a link, again, is in the description, but it basically covers all the rules and regulations on YouTube. There's links on each of these pages so you can go into real uh, deep dive on this, like nudity, sexual content, harmful, hateful content, violent or graphic. A lot of it is common sense, but I think in the past, YouTube hasn't enforced these rules as strongly as you might expect. So that's why I think it's now coming into sharp focus. So that is something uh, very much to keep an eye on. And the final thing I wanted to look at here in staying safe, and this is something that's kind of overshadowed all of YouTube's attempts here to try and be as transparent with their community as possible is this recent story where a video creator discovered some sort of weird underground child exploitation set of videos. And this was all being manifested and created by comments. They were putting in timestamps on certain videos which showed certain images which... I guess taken out of context would, would seem a little inappropriate. It was all relatively safe content, but there was some weird stuff going on in there. And it's really difficult to go into detail here. Uh, certainly read the news articles. But the really important thing that came out of this was that YouTube has the power or will demonetize content and channels based off of YouTube comments. So something that you are not in control of at all has the potential to harm your channel. And I was looking again on Twitter, there was, a, I think, a, a channel that was uh, all to do with um, a gymnast, a young gymnast, uh, and you know, completely innocent, but it was being then t used for um, indecent m content. And that has caused their channel to potentially be demonetized in the short term. I need to, I haven't looked at that story for a couple of days, but I know that there's now re completely innocent family, young children's channels that are being hit by this. And I, in this case, like, how can we, how can you control this? You have no power over this. And I'm not saying to video creators, don't do content with children, because I'm sure it's safe and you're following the guidelines, but it's how can you control this? YouTubers, again, had to act fast and kind of, many people will think this is a knee-jerk reaction, but there's advertisers pulling out of this and YouTubers just need to, need to show a step to the advertisers. So I think Dara Leaves called this like the, the YouTube balance where you've got the viewers, the video creators and the advertisers, and it's that fine balancing act is always really difficult, and YouTube have had to, had to act again. Like Jeremy, I don't know if there's anything you can add on this. It's just such a super sensitive topic, and the, nobody wins from this. Yeah, I guess the only thing I'll add is I've probably had a dozen people contact me in the last couple of days 
saying that they lost their comments on videos with children mm -hmm. and then they were able to enable them back. Yeah. Um, somehow there's a manual way to enable them back. So I think it's going to hit a lot of people and I think it's necessary. I mean, one thing you have to remember is YouTube's bigger than television in most countries. Now. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yep. so, you know, a lot of people just don't comprehend how huge YouTube is. YouTube is like a television, you know, it's, it's insanely large. Like I, I heard a stat recently that 5 billion views a day or something crazy like that happened mm, now. Yeah. So there's so much going on. Let's just be honest. Protecting kids is kind of a no brainer. Absolutely. Like, come yeah. On. yeah. You guys are going to suffer and weird stuff's going to happen for them to fix this stuff. But wouldn't you rather be in a safe place for your kids? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I guess the summary is here. Uh, be as safe as possible with your content for obvious reasons of community guidelines. But just be aware that YouTube is such a huge platform now that there are always things going on. And uh, this has affected this has affected probably a tiny portion of video creators, but it's a huge news story. And then it could have a ripple effect throughout the rest of the content on YouTube. And also another reason to consider not relying 100% on AdSense as your income. It is a tiny drop in the ocean of the potential that you could earn from yourself as a video creator, a business owner, a service provider, uh, and developing products. And, and that, and that is ultimately what it boils down to again, this AdSense problem, which a lot of people need to understand is just a small slice of a pie that you could enjoy as a social media influencer. I mean, I, I know people hate that term, but uh, that's kind of where I was going with that. So, there we are, folks. That's the introduction to playing it safe on YouTube and being responsible as a video creator. What we're going to do, do now is move on to your favorite part of our weekly live streams, and that is the channel audits. I'm just going to show you on screen here how this works every single week. We do a uh, channel audit for free for you, and how you do that is there is a link in the video description, a quick audit form. Uh, I purge this form every single week, so it's completely blank. If you fill it out within the hour before we go onto the live stream, you have a chance of being audited. Do not ask for a review or an audit in the chat. It will get you absolutely nowhere for the main reason that we cannot keep an eye on the chat as we're going. And thousands of people would ask if we did that. So make sure you keep it to the form. Super chats, well, very much appreciated. I have just seen some, uh, which I'm going to read out at some point in the uh, live stream. Uh, do not guarantee you a review, although they are very welcome. We want to try and keep this a free service. And uh, Jeremy, you always like to point out here, like apologies in advance if we can't fit you in. And Jeremy, you, I think you're the best at summing up why um, why we do this. Yeah, you guys, you know, we have t over 200 people watching right now. We obviously can't get to all of you, but I do want you to know a little secret. And that is if you take our advice for any of the channels and apply it to your own channel, it will be almost as good as getting your own audit. So do me a favor, instead of being negative, oh, we couldn't get to everyone's channels, try to find that positive of learning how we do these audits so that you can apply it to yourself. Absolutely, and we'll try and audit as many as we can. Like e even at the conference last week, we audited 100 plus people over that three days and we still could barely get through everybody who wanted to audit it. So we're just trying to provide a, as best a service as, as we can. Uh, if you cannot get a channel audit, what I recommend you do, if you haven't already, is download the vidIQ Chrome extension because it allows you to do amazing things such as, if I quickly show on screen, it allows you to click on the channel audit button and it gives you a channel audit. Get this, Jeremy. 24-7. Wow. Even when we are asleep, it will tell you what you are doing right and wrong on your channel. And I'm delighted that I can show you a channel audit here of vidIQ this week, which has 84% plus in the view range and 72% plus okay. in the watch time. Woohoo! And why is that? Because we've done some more PewDiePie stuff and people love that sort of thing. We are thinking of rebranding our channel uh, and our business to be called PewDieQ because um, <laughs> people love that sort of content. But yeah, this will give you a full audit on your own channel and all of the wonderful things that you can 
can do right and wrong. And many of these, uh, many of these tools here are free. And what's the final thing? Yeah, okay, so our opinions are based off of first impressions. Sometimes we will read a channel and we'll get it somewhat wrong, but you have to appreciate that just like a potential viewer visiting your channel, looking at your thumbs and thumbnails and your titles, uh, it's first impressions, and that's what's gonna be happening with your audience as well. So, Jeremy, without further ado, uh, while I quickly, rapidly press some buttons in the background so that you can see uh, my screen and you can appear on screen as a static face. Are you ready for I some am. live stream action? Let's uh, do this. And I've actually remembered to put in the transition this time. Oh yeah, good stuff there. Let's now go to our first channel. And uh, this channel, I have to say, is from an awesome video creator. Uh, Ginger helped us at the conference in London and did such an awesome job we promised her that we would do a channel audit but there's a second reason why we're doing this is because this is a fantastic template for some of you to follow uh, for your own channels so I'm gonna go first a little bit Jeremy because you uh, kind of gave a few pointers at the conference so uh, what I wanted to say uh, out of a bat is this channel you can instantly get a understanding of what it is about which is and this is something I know absolutely nothing about. It's a keto diet, whatever that is. Do you know what a keto diet is, Jeremy, just quickly? Yeah, I do. It's it's low carbs, meat. Oh, sorry, yeah. It's right up my alley. Yeah, that's that's it. Well, I'm asking you, and it even says it in the, in the channel banner, so how stupid am I? Low carb recipes and new attrition science. And that's pretty much all of the focus of this channel, which I think is absolutely awesome. The video creator knows exactly what their niche is and is building video after video, like what, three videos a week here, which is absolutely awesome stuff. The thumbnails are of a high quality, but there's one thing I'm gonna say about them, and that is, when I look at the um, wallpaper of thumbnails here, where are my eyes drawn to? And I, the problem I think is that my eyes are drawn too much to all of the big white blocks of text on each of the thumbnails. And I just think there's a, a bit too much text going on here. And the reason I say that is if I go to most popular videos, when the star of the thumbnail is the food itself, the text is a little less strong, certainly in these top ones here. So I would encourage Ginger to maybe experiment a little more with um, not necessarily less text, but a more subtle text, which isn't quite as striking. Just in the most uh, in the most recent ones I see here, there are two videos which I noticed. This one here of a slice of cake, and these uh, this uh, thumbnail here with uh, three mugs with no text whatsoever, and they do seem to be performing uh, a little better than the most recent videos as well, which have a lot of text. So those are my general thoughts on this channel. But Jeremy, uh, over to you. I know you had a lot of positive things to say about this channel, uh, which will help many video creators. Yeah, one thing I would say is I would like to see food on the banner and maybe even yeah. her preparing food. Mm -hmm. I also am not 100% sold on the, the, the illustration here because it's about food. So just like you said with the thumbnails, I want the banner's hero to be food mm -hmm. prep and the and her and her like maybe holding the food um you can still keep the pastel color palettes uh, those are great um but i would i would definitely have less text on the banner more food so people clearly know that it's keto keto um and then on the thumbnails bigger faces similar colors i would actually stick to that pink pastel color in general and like rob said make always make the food the hero tasty uh is probably the biggest food channel on youtube with 12 million subscribers so i'm guessing um you should really just study them they are masters at thumbnails for sure uh, beyond that the tags, titles, you know, everything else, she is absolutely killing yeah, it. Yeah, I, I love the um, addition of the uh, emojis in the titles, but and crucially, not at the beginning of a title. Uh, I think that's a really, really nice touch there. Um, and I, I feel as if the, the video crazy has, definitely has the channel focus, uh, strong niche, 
And there's gonna be, there's gonna be a certain video which it has that that breakthrough moment. I think the, the channel's already primed for that in terms of the content. Little tweaks here and there, as we say, with the uh, the graphical touches. But I'm I'm just waiting for one of these videos to maybe get like twenty thousand views or fifty thousand views, and that's like okay. Now I know exactly uh, which maybe food topic in Kato to knuckle down on for a, a series uh, and then go on there. And I, I also love the idea that you've got this sort of haul videos as well. They're always really popular as well. So there's certain series going on there. So it's all fantastic stuff, Ginger. And yeah, as we know you are one of the hardest working people in YouTube, thanks to your efforts uh, with us at the conference. And all we can do is wish you the absolute best luck in your uh, future endeavors. Any final words there, Jeremy, before we move on? Um. I would just say if you're going to make a keto cheesecake recipe, make 10. <laughs> so just go more series based so you have more possibilities of ranking for those terms. Yeah. And I guess there's room for that in because the video creator publishes three videos a week. So there's, there's room to create consistent series and not have the video creator getting, I guess, fatigue from one topic if it's going on for a couple of months. All right there, Ginger. Uh, once again, thank you very much for all of your help here uh, with VidIQ in the last week and best of luck with your channel. All right, what we're going to do is move on to the next channel. But Jeremy, I'm going to try and do it a, a little bit differently here. I'm going to let you lead this one and then I'll chip in uh, with the next channel. So here we go. It is Top Toys Tina and I will leave it there, Jeremy. Take it away. Sure. I love the banner uh, because it tells me exactly what the channel is about. And the channel is about kids kids stuff. And that's about what I need to know, right? So um, the banner's great. I think, uh, you know, children will know exactly that they're in the right place because they see bright colors. They see um, primary colors that are represented well with children's eyes. Their vision works better with primary colors. So um, I think that's great. I think that I almost immediately know there's a lot to do about Disney. Yep. Um, which makes it eat the thumbnails are great in that perspective i love that the and this is one thing i'm teaching creators a lot more these days make your background your background for your for your for your thumbnails so in this case their floor is primary colors yeah so i think that is brilliant the only thing i would change on the primary color floor background uh thumbnails is just oversaturate them, make them too colorful so that when they get so small, they're still pop really hard. So using, uh, I actually, in, in my studio here, I have another photo studio just for thumbnails now. And I was thinking to myself, why would I cut myself out when I could just buy a $20, you know, something backdrop. and yeah, backdrop, yeah. you know, paint, whatever and just not have to cut myself out ever again. I think that, uh, you know, planning for your thumbnails and taking still photos and being more purposeful with the design of your thumbnails could literally save you like an hour per thumbnail. Um, and in this case, I love that background color or the floor color. I think that's, that's really brilliant. And if you did that often, it would, be the pattern. It would be the thing that ties your thumbnails together. I also like the fact that you're using a lot of emojis on your thumbnails. Uh, the only thing I would say is try to make the faces bigger and just pop the colors harder. And I think your thumbnails would be perfect. The, yep. ne the next thing I would just say is I, I don't really see a theme here as far as what the overall strategy from a, a you know, a long tail keyword perspective is. So you have birthdays and Disney and Minnie Mouse and toddlers and, you know, you have all kinds of things going on. I would just try to find your, your channel focus and, and try to apply that into most of your titles. Yep. I would pretty much uh, agree with everything you said there. I mean, I, I, when I look at the channel banner, I just think make all your thumbnails look as strong and powerful as these, as the channel banner. And that, that, exactly. that, would be, that would be brilliant. And what I've also noticed here is that there has been some sort of channel uplift here. Like we look at the videos from a couple of months ago, they're in the triple digits. And then all of a sudden, bang, every single video after that is in the thousands and you have a thousand subscribers. So, you're doing something that, right. You've reached out to a wider audience, which I think is absolutely awesome. Yeah, and the um, likes and dislikes reflect that as well. So 
I think you're yeah, certainly onto a, a good thing with, with with the momentum that you have and a strong audience. Uh, as Jeremy says, like a general strategy and maybe adopting a, a consistent color theme in your videos is the way forward. But yeah, having all good things here from a relatively small channel, uh, Top Toys Tina. All right, I will take the lead on the next one which is living with a Renault, Zoe. Uh, so for our North American audience, these are um, what I would like to say uh, incredibly unreliable French cars. Uh, although <laughs> I, that, that, although I don't, maybe that's a, a slander and uh, the Renault might be in touch with us here. I do apologize. Um, other, I guess other French cars are available as well. But I mean, what I love about this is you know exactly what this channel is about the moment you visit the channel and you look at any of the titles and the thumbnails. Renault Zoe, Renault Zoe, uh, Renault Zoe. I mean, obviously that must be the, kind of like your channel name keyword in there. You've got the hero of the uh, hero in there, which is either yourself or the Renault, of course. And I, th I guess this is about your experiences with an electric Renault car, which is super niche. Like, how focused can, how more focused than you get, unless you want to review a cup holder within the uh, Renault itself. And like, you've got a really committed audience. Like, you're just about to crack 400 subscribers. You probably will do after this audit. And you've got views in the like the high hundreds and the uh, low thousands there. So I think there's awesome stuff going on there. Some little tweaks may be required for the thumbnails. But yeah, Jeremy, any extra thoughts here? I think I don't know where else to go because it's such an awesome channel already. Yeah, I really like that you're starting with the cars, the, the brand's name uh, first. Yeah. Um, I don't think you need the number in your vlog, like vlog 10, vlog 11, Good point, vlog yeah. 12. I don't really think that helps anything anymore. Um, maybe back in the day it did, but it doesn't now. Um, and if you want that number, just like stick it as a lower third, like in the first 10, 15 seconds of a video, maybe. And I was talking to a travel vlog yesterday. And one thing a lot of people don't realize as vloggers is that there is, there could be a balance between just vlogging and answering questions. You could even answer questions and vlog at the same time. So my challenge to you would be to find the questions people are asking about your car and Excellent. your electric car Good point, yeah. and answer those in a vlog format. Yeah. And my, and my final thought for this channel is that you've gone so niche uh, uh, to begin your channel that like, how many, how many, how much fuel does this channel have? I, I Can you make like 200, 300, 400 videos? I think long term is probably some sort of exit strategy you need to think about. And I, my guess is that this is, although the topic is the, um, the car, my guess is that the story behind it is, is a lot about you and your experience as a, as a as driving or using an electric car for the first time. So I think, you're certainly in the thumbnail, so I think that's going to be strong. But in a year's in a year's time, you're still going to be just talking about uh, driving a, an electric Renault. I think that's a. I know we're sort of really thinking long term here as the channel grows, but that's something to think about uh, potentially in the future. So there we are. Uh, we have uh, living with a Renault Zoe. I love I love the concept of this channel. Uh, although I guess one is 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 that the name of a car? It must be Jeremy because the channel's name is emma jackson that's only just occurred to yeah me. yeah I'm, yes, we, we might have to google that um right yeah that was a reynolds Zia, Z, reynold zoe next channel jeremy again you are going to be the lead on this one tech with ashan or asan yeah so real quickly i think the banner is missing you i think people will eventually subscribe to you for you not for the tech necessarily you got to understand with almost 500 hours of of content uploaded to youtube every minute and it is a global you know platform that people need to find a way to connect to you um so i would add your face to the banner so i'd make your face bigger on your thumbnails I would remove like 80% of the text now. Yep. However, sa saying that... This is this interesting conundrum, isn't it? I know what you're going to yeah, say next, Jeremy. So in India, people use a ton of text. They and do. some of the biggest channels in the world have tons of text. I don't know if this is a cultural thing me and Rob don't really know about or if it's just a thing people do and it would still work better with our principles of 
the three E's eyes, emotion and excitement. But, um, in India, people use a lot of text. Um, now I will say T series doesn't mm -hmm. yep. and T series is the biggest channel in India, obviously. So, um, <laughs> Um, I thought you were going to say in the world for a second then, and we would yeah. we would have had a riot. Oh my god, <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, so try to experiment with with less text. Try to make your face bigger, have more expressions and emotion, and show your eyes larger. And then also try to have more of a theme with your thumbnails. So mm -hmm. whether yeah. it's it's the color, shape, logo, something to tie your brand all together. So people know in your banner, it's purple, but then in your thumbnails, you have no purple. So try to keep a consistent theme. And then you're doing so many, it's almost like you have, instead of t a tech channel or a how to channel, it's more of a vlog. So you're mm, talking about TikTok yeah. and you're talking about downloading games and you're talking about everything. So try to find a way to, if you really want to break out on YouTube, I would find a way to do one thing. I would do one thing very well. I'd answer questions that people are asking. And I would also experiment with doing it in India, Indian, because Basically, India is the largest growing population of YouTubers in the world. So I would find a way, or fastest growing rather, um, I would find a way to, to see if doing it in your native uh, language and, you know, text and titles and everything, if that doesn't actually do better for you um, for two reasons. There's a lot of viewers, but a lot of people are slow to the game of, of getting tech channels up in india so maybe there's a, a loophole there for you where english might not be your best choice yeah i think this is a quite a dilemma for a lot of indian video creators because i think there's like 22 official languages in india and right. even though sometimes the uh, video thumbnails and titles are in english uh, when you jump into video itself is actually i think in uh, hindi or another language so let's just quickly test that yeah, so classic example there of where um, there's a lot, and again, this is a cultural thing which we not probably not following quite right um, properly. Is there, is there a tendency to use uh, English text and then the video be in a different language? So I'm sure there's reasons for that. Um, but yeah, we're just sort of offering alternative ideas. One thing, one final thing I would say here, Jeremy, is like, boom, what's that channel about? Yep. Boom, what's that channel about? No idea. It's, it's like a it's very simple uh, juxtaposition there. Wow, that's a, a long word. It's almost as if somebody tried to dare me to use that word in the live stream. But yeah, juxtaposition between the two channels there. So um, good, a good example of where you can work out a channel in 10 seconds and then with another channel, still five minutes later as we're talking about it. We know it's about tech, but tech is such a broad topic. Uh, where are you going to find your, your little home in tech? All right, now who's leading the next one? I think it's me. Um, we're looking at Raymond or Fine Arts. Congratulations on 600 subscribers that you have just cracked. So this one, I guess, is about a certain type of uh, paint, pastel coloring. Again, uh, my lack of knowledge in this area is going to be very evident very quickly. What I'm going to very immediately say about the thumbnails is that there's a bit too much repetition here and I think Jeremy may disagree with me on this one but I think this is a, a genre of YouTube where the person is not necessarily the hero of the content it's the final produced piece of art for example this one here where we have a polar bear painting I mean, it looks fantastic i think it might look even better if you zoomed in even more on this thumbnail to show the details and you removed yourself completely from the uh, from the thumbnail jeremy would you agree or disagree there as we're talking about this little yeah i mean i i would experiment with having your face there but i would do it in an organic way and what i okay. mean by I would actually have a picture of the picture and you, um, not segmented. So like you're in front of the picture or something like that. Yeah. And Another thing is I do believe that the hero, like when you're doing food is food. Yeah. When you're doing video games, it's the video game or video game characters. Yeah. And when it's painting, it's the painting mm -hmm. when it's, you know, woodworking, it's, it's the craft piece of craft that you made. So, I agree, but I would experiment uh, with having your face there. But 
you know, it depends on the channel. Some food uh, channels that I, you know, I tell people how to make better thumbnails on sometimes having their face in the Instapot recipe or something like that actually does better. So that is definitely an experimentation. But another thing I would do is I would oversaturate your art yes. by 30, 40% yeah. to make it pop because when pixels get crushed, you know, this small, yeah. just kind of muddy. Yeah. And even though your pictures look amazing, I think they would, they're not true to form. Yeah, I, I, you're, you're right. It's almost when you, um, from what I remember, when you go into an electric store and you look at televisions, they're, even though you never you wouldn't watch the television at home in those settings, they're oversaturated uh, to catch the potential customers. They're walking around the store. I think that's true. And, I, and like you say, although you're sort of undermining your art, uh, in the one sense, in order to, for it to be seen uh, on YouTube, you do have to, I guess, create an artificial um, intrigue and desire to see the thumbnail. And, and yeah, just going back to the thumbnails in general, like you were saying, like segment experiment. I just find the the, the person that in on here with exactly the same expression, and then the black is really quite jarring next to the imagery as well. Another thing I wanted to point out here is what is your specific art keyword because i look at this one which is an oil painting demo then we've got an acrylic liquid pour and then another one which is uh decorating and then oil painting again and then uh koi cart painting demonstration i mean jeremy you like to go to town on this in terms of what is the keyword here and i don't think their video creators just quite established that yet right so you have the passion you have the art you're creative but what you don't have is a fundamental theme Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, you know, there's probably if you typed in the search bar, like how to draw or how to paint or how to, you know, oil, there's probably some type of long tail phrase that you could apply to each uh, topic. And then what I would do instead of oil painting demo of the river mole at Leatherhead, maybe it's just a demo you might be able to do something like speed drawing. So speed drawing is really popular. So, or speed painting. Um, so you got to really understand what people want to consume and then create content around that. It's not the other way around. It's about them, not you. So if people want to like speed paint, speed painting, if they want to watch awesome artists such as yourself, you know, draw, maybe they want to see it in, in, fast forward if they want to learn how to do it maybe you want to to teach them so um so obviously you're doing it you're doing the the speed painting yeah. but you're not using the words people are searching for for speed drawing or speed painting yeah and just one more thing i also noted there is that is it just a speed paint is it time lapse speed painting with just some music in the background or do you do voiceovers because i think it'd be really important to have a voiceover if you don't we only looked at like 10 seconds there but it sounded like music all right, that is Raymond All Fine Art. Jeremy, lead on this one, which is Spy Clip Inc. 100 subscribers, what can we see from this channel? I'd say you're really good at being a spy because there's <laughs> nothing on the banner. Whoa, Jeremy, wow. Burn, savage. Spice. Sorry, Spice <laughs> Clip Inc. I'm just messing with you. Uh, but, you know, I will say I really like the design of your thumbnails, the purple there. Uh, I think that you don't need any text on your thumbnails. I think that's just really confusing because you have text on the left-hand side. Um, I don't think it's like who killed Albert, for example. I don't think that's helping sell the story. I also think that the text is small enough and there's, there's not enough definition in, in, you know, being bold or contrasting enough with the background that you really can't read most of the text. So I'd remove the text. I do like it. I would also saturate the colors a little bit. And obviously on the banner, I would tell people what your channel is about and why that matters. Um, so people don't have to guess the thing that people will not tolerate on YouTube anymore with so many creator options is don't make me guess who you are, why you matter and what you do. I, I love okay. the way you put that. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, so in the thumbnails and in the banner and even in your titles, explain yourself and do it in a way that um, how people search for content. 
Final thoughts for me. Uh, I agree mostly with what Jeremy said. I've been some a couple of strange videos here where you, I think it's like it's gaming, but you're jumping from many different games. Then you have one about my morning routine, which seems completely out there, and it's only 15 seconds long, so I'm not sure why that's there. And then I, I was intrigued by this one. How to be a I think this is how to be a gentleman in a video game, so like video game etiquette, which is seems like an interesting approach to. Uh, looking at video games, something a little unusual, and I just thought there might be an idea uh, going forward in that one. And with gaming channels, you started six months ago and you produced, what, 10 videos uh, right now, nine videos. Uh, the YouTube gaming uh, genre is uh, quite ruthless, so um, certainly consistency and more content uh, would help you there. What we're going to do right now, Jeremy, is uh, we are going to allow our awesome audience to take a quick uh, restroom break. Uh, so, folks... Uh, while we're gone, I'm going to load up some more uh, videos, uh, some more channels for us to audit, uh, and we'll be back very soon after these messages. I've always wanted to say that. If your YouTube <laughs> channel is stuck in a rut, maybe it's time you gave it the vidIQ boost treatment. Still not convinced? Here's 10 reasons why you should. vidIQ. vidIQ. vidIQ.com. With vidIQ Boost, you have complete access to one of the most powerful marketing tools on YouTube, the Channel Audit. It will show you in a snapshot what's working on your channel, what isn't working on your channel, and all of those little things like titles, tags, and end screens that you need to fix. We also take the guesswork out of search engine optimization with our keyword suggestion tools. Knowing what people are searching for means you know what to include in your titles, tags, and descriptions all of which you can add with a single click. With our competitor tracking tool, you can follow up to 20 channels working in the same video space as you. If their content is catching fire, chances are they're doing something right and you need to add your own spin to the topic. One of our Boost exclusive tools is Bulk SEO. This analyzes content you have already published and shows you how people are finding that content and how you can improve it further with keywords you're not even using. Have vidIQ do the work for you by alerting you through email with a list of videos that are trending based on your search criteria. If you see a trend blowing up, it's time to ride that wave for massive channel growth. Want to quickly post videos natively on Facebook rather than YouTube links? Our syndication tool can do that for you in just a few easy clicks. Through subscriber analysis, you can discover what your fans do when they're not watching you. This can help you discover new video topics and channels of interest, as well as understanding when your subscribers are online, so you know the best time to publish your content. Have you ever wanted to know which channels covering similar topics to you are having viral moments, no matter how big or indeed how small the channel is? Our most viewed tool will help you uncover those hidden gems. With vidIQ Boost, you also get vidIQ Pro features as well, which include our titles, tags and descriptions translation tool, as well as the controversial keyword checker, saving you from possible demonetization flags. And while we're on the subject of upgrade banners and locked features and rocket icons you might have seen as a vidIQ free user, with vidIQ Boost, all of this goes away. You have complete access to every single one of our tools. Our support team is available and ready to answer your questions in the supported languages on screen now. Start boosting your channel today and let us educate you on your YouTube journey. All right then, folks, we are returning for part two of the weekly live stream uh, with myself, Rob, and Jeremy here at vidIQ. And uh, what we always do at a certain point during the live stream is we take a question of the week. I'm always scouring the comments uh, on the vidIQ channel, and we're going to take one from there, and then we're going to take your questions later on in the live stream. So, Jeremy, uh, this week's question of the week is kind of not a question, but I thought it brought up an interesting uh, topic of discussion in terms of uh, how much of a how much a personality should be inserted into a channel. And so the question here... 
Oh, the statement from uh, Barbara Creations was, uh, I don't show myself uh, because in my channel I show tutorials, and so you can see only my hands. Maybe I should show my face more often. I follow other tips already, and subs are increasing little by little. So I think that the question here is, like, how much should you make yourself part of the... Um, channel and my thoughts on this were generally especially like in a how-to channel this can be a lot more difficult because because of the nature of your content people are just wanting to find an answer to a question and then once they've got that answer they're not really invested in uh, your content so why should they subscribe and then i thought about well what are we doing here at vidiq because essentially we're just trying to answer the question of how to get more views and subscribers and grow your channel so why do so many people subscribe to our channel? Why are there so many people on this live stream now? Why uh, do we feel as if we've got repeat customers to our content? And I think it's because we've kind of built up a, you know, a personality. And I don't want to sort of elevate myself, but I, I always say when I first joined uh, vidIQ that I didn't want it to be just about the, the products and the tools that we have, but also uh, building a community and a camaraderie with the audience that we have. So yeah, w general thoughts there on how video creators, how important it is for them to be part of a channel and not just always be about the topic, the answers, the questions and so on. Yeah, it's when I did, I helped create Adobe Television like 10 years ago. And one thing we learned is about 60 to 80% of the time you're teaching, you're mm. setting up a concept. So physically like doing a craft or physically, you know, clicking on something in Photoshop is less than 30, 40% of the time. So by showing yourself setting up the concept and then physically doing, I think you're going to build a more rapport. And if someone is in the crafts, they're gonna keep on watching your craft video. So if I'm changing my alternator on my car, I'm probably never gonna see you again. Mm -hmm. But if it's a something you're passionate about, like a sport or crafts or you know woodworking then people will probably want to love you they want to come back and see you but nonverbal communication is greater than verbal communication so if you don't actually show yourself no one's going to be able to subconsciously connect to you as a human they can't connect the hands necessarily <laughs> so <laughs> folks that is the eyes. that is a quote of a live stream you cannot connect to hands love it <laughs> You know, I, I'm always, if you guys watch these live streams, which a lot of you guys are, are repeat customers, as Rob said, um, then you know I'm always going on and on and on about eyes. Well, it's really important. Nonverbal communication is greater than verbal communication. It's really, really important. So my challenge to you is why don't you just start the 30 seconds, 20 seconds to tease what you're going to do with you on camera, maybe end it with you on camera and then see how it goes. But I will say that not only will it help, it'll probably help by tenfold. Yeah. Um, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to make it interrupt getting to the point and teaching your craft. That's where people mistake their, you know, people are there to learn something. So teach that. Don't make it interrupt it just make it part of it and that is a fine line that w that i i'm always treading on my videos but i think in these live streams as well like we're having a bit of fun here and there but ultimately you're here to get some value out of it, out of it. and that's what we hope to provide uh, so there we are that's the question of the week we will be taking some of questions live from you later on but now it's time to get back to some channel audits so jeremy please confirm that you can see my screen when i press certain buttons are you good yep Okay, so the next channel we are going to look at is, if I can find it, oh, there was one I was, I just loaded up and I've lost it. Oh no, here it is. All right, so this is the channel. Um, folks, we are looking at the Cox Clan channel with 878 subscribers. Uh, when I look at it, it looks as if it's a channel by a couple, uh, maybe a bit of a, a vlog type channel stories. There's one here about the wedding video, but there's also videos about driving a Tesla Model 3. So lots of different topics. And when I look at these ones about Model 3 Teslas, I think they're the more, the more popular ones that I can immediately see on the channel. 
But generally, I don't know what the the focus of a channel is. I assume it's revolving around your lives in some way. The channel banner doesn't really suggest that uh, clearly. And then the thumbnails and the, the video topics seem to be jumping all over the place. I'm not really sure um, what the channel's about all the time. And I think that's reflected in the subscribers and view count. So you're close to a thousand subscribers, but you get videos such as your wedding day, which get 180 views. And then other ones here about selling your old phone to Walmart, which get three and a half thousand views. So there's a real diverse range of view counts here, which makes it uh, an interesting channel in terms of I think you need to decide what you want to do going forward and then streamline your content towards those values. Would you agree with that, Jeremy? Seems to be in the right area. Yeah, I mean, they clearly seem to know what they're doing, but they also don't have a focus. It's more of a vlog right now, which is fine. However, vlogs are hard <laughs> because it's personality-based. Yeah, and if yeah. you really are personality-based, I'd get your faces bigger every time and expressions crazier and you know basically do collabs with 20 to 30 other vloggers if you really want to go the vlog direction that's cool it's just difficult to go from 800 subscribers to 800,000 with vlogs um my safe advice to you if you really want to get big and make this you know a thing um, is to answer questions in, that people are asking in a vlog in a specific genre. Mm -hmm. um, so if I was going to do a vlog, I would do a travel vlog or a food vlog or, you know what I mean? I would do mm -hmm. a thing and a thing only as a vlog. And then I would start. So instead of fishing in the ocean, I'm starting to fish in a barrel. I then know the other food vloggers. I then know the other food vloggers on my state, in my country. And then I know the uh, companies that are willing to work with food vloggers and start getting brand deals. And I know, so basically right now you're kind of in the middle of the sea on a raft and you're just hanging out and doing awesome content and you're having fun and that's cool. But if you, if you make your world smaller and you're in a barrel now, then you just have a lot more opportunity to beat more people like you, to understand the companies that are players in this game uh, with food vlogging or whatever you end up doing. And then you're able to build your credibility more and you're able to collab more. It just makes a lot more sense. Folks, I want you to rate Jeremy's metaphors because I think they're absolutely fantastic. What was that? Um, fish, fish in a barrel or what was it? Uh, catch fish in a sea. It was, it was poetry and I need that when I'm doing making my own videos. Hopefully that was helpful to you, the Cox clan. Uh, next channel we are looking at, I think you're leading on this one, Jeremy. It's Kyle's Big Pig. Uh, 22 subscribers. Uh, it publishes every Wednesday and Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern. And what do we have here? By the way, I just want to say like a lot of the uh, comments today have been kind of mean. So appreciate that, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian says we're being way too stiff. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> and we have to push past our anxiety. We've had a lot of stuff today. I mean, you know what? We totally value you guys' opinion. Bring it on. We're going to have a great time today, and we're going to keep on pushing through. Um, so... <laughs> And then Skylar says, a Jeremy vest out of 10. <laughs> I like that. That must be at least a, a 15. <laughs> All right. So I love these thumbnails. Um, the colors are great. I would just love to see a color instead of many colors. Um, and could you go back up to the back? Yeah, sure. So I guess... I don't know what this means. Uh, could you click on one of the videos? Yeah, the, the pig is a little distracting, isn't it? It's like, is, yeah. is the pig a big um, part of the videos? Okay, we'll do, uh, we'll do this one. I'm restarting my 5K training again on today's Big Pig. So I've talked on my channel before about the meal planning aspect of my weight loss plan, but I barely touched on the topic of exercise. My focus... 
So I wouldn't necessarily say there's a there's a certain big pig involved uh, in the in the videos. Well, I think uh, I think I think it's a weight loss journey. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe in some, he's yeah. Referring to himself for his journey as the big pig. The problem with that though, and now that I understand what the channel's about, I can see a tape measure un underneath the pig and the the icon. But I will just say, like Kyle's big pig uh, icon looks like a children's. Uh, thing and then the banner kind of reminds me of a children's thing so and then the colors look very primary colors so that it looks more like a children's thing so i think you're sending missed messages to people and i don't think people would just come to your banner or your icon or your thumbnails and know that let's say you're on a weight loss journey or you're on a journey to do a 5k or you're on a journey to lose weight so I would fundamentally change the visuals to be more of you on a journey to, to weight loss. I would remove the children like icon so that it makes more sense to people and have a picture of you maybe in a uh, sports gear or something like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe you on a scale or, you know, something that just really makes it simple for people to know. Another thing I would do is instead of having like the curtains behind you, I'd probably be in a gym or working out or doing pushups or doing something that makes people feel like they're in the right place. Yeah. I'm just uh, scrolling down the, the thumbnail. So yeah. There's and I do like the food behind you the best as far as thumbnails go. Okay. Uh, the the only uh, additional question I he had here was about the uh, video length. Uh, it's, it looks to be uh, relatively short videos. I'm wondering if if you checked your audience retention and if it's relatively high. I'm wondering if you could maybe push up your um, uh, video length as well. Just generally speaking, I mean, we're going into very general what the r rules of a uh, building successful content. And it tends to be a little longer. And I think in it, with this storytelling that you're doing of weight loss, which is what we think it's about, I think there's probably uh, more room for uh, longer content pot potentially there, uh, just as a thought. So there you are, uh, Kyle's uh, Big Pig. Uh, we wish you the best of luck on your journey and your YouTube channel. I think I'm leading with this one, which is uh, Mr. Torbuild. Um, with some really psychedelic uh, colors on a channel banner. Um, so interesting and entertaining videos. I'm taking a break. Oh, right. So you're taking a break from YouTube and, and studying until March the 14th. Uh, so <laughs> I've never actually seen uh, somebody almost put like, um, uh, like a, a, a sign on their shop window saying close for business until uh, a certain time. Um, like but yeah, like we're, we're already like, what, 30, 45 seconds into the uh looking at this channel and what is it about it seems as if it's got some travel elements to it uh what we got exploring in milan and he said there's going to be snow in south wales so some vloggy stuff there and the misunderstanding about t-series and pewdiepie being overtaken so trying to um capitalize on trending content which is good and then there's one video here which has got 2,000 views which is about increasing your snapchat score uh, so I, I, this looks as if it's a, a, a video creator who's relatively new to YouTube, uh, who's just trying to understand what their niche is. Yeah, look, I think you're about, you've been on here for about six months, and I think it's absolutely fantastic that you're experimenting with all of these different things, which is awesome. So I just, I think, keep up with it. Your audience is now at 750 subscribers. You're building a, an audience slowly and gradually, like looking here, every single video recently is in triple digits, which again, is, I think is a good indication of a channel growing. Thumbnails, I think they need to be tweaked a little bit. They're a little too, uh, I, I think Jeremy's used this word before, a little too muddy. So maybe up in the saturation and zooming in and making things a little more focused. I'd say generally they look as if they're freeze frames, which have been adapted into thumbnails. So you probably need to think about um, specific thumbnail imagery that you want to take uh, in preparation for that. Any more to add there, Jeremy? I think we've pretty, pretty much covered it. And of course, w um, when you come back, uh, just keep at it and, and work hard creating content. Yeah, you're good. Next channel then is uh, Benji'sDad.com. Over 20,000 subscribers here. Jeremy, what do you think this channel is about? Well, I'm confused. On one hand, I think it's about Benji's dad. <laughs> On the other hand... I Whoever he is. 
business coaching, inspirational, motivational money stuff. Um, but I don't know, right? Is it affiliate? Is it making money? Is it, you know, inspirational quotes? Um, I don't really know. But I guess the Benji's dad part confuses me. It is the name of his website, so I think that's pretty pretty much etched in stone. Um, right. What that what what that is. But I guess I would want to have a visual and verbal. Cons. I want to know what he does, right? Um. So, he has in his description. He explains it. But maybe a better visual explanation and, and maybe even on the banner having. So take control of your life with an online business is great. But Benji's dad, that it's just confu- personally, it just confuses. So you think um, the the value proposition needs to be the focus of a channel banner, uh, at least. I would say almost something like learn how to make money online from your from someone like your dad or I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like to yeah, tie nice, in nice. the thing. Yeah. to where it all makes sense. And and I think he could definitely do that. And I like Benji'sDad.com. I think it's a great domain name and it makes a lot of sense. But I just think like from a from a messaging perspective, it's just messy right now. What about the uh, the thumbnails and like the video content here? It looks fairly um, strong here in terms of it's, it's essentially about uh, ways to make money. Uh, uh, through affiliate marketing, it looks like there. Is there anything we could add to this? Uh, yeah, some bit I of think... consistency maybe in the coloring, but got the YouTuber face. Um, yeah. Text is strong when used. I think it's really good. I, I think I just keep on going and learning with on thumbnails. Mm-hmm. I think that the white stroke outline may be a little... 2017 maybe experiment with a little bit more designs <laughs> you, you say that just as a, i've introduced it back into our own thumbnails here at vidiq so thanks a lot yeah, there, i wasn't talking yeah. about that <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about that right now no, just, um but the the thing i see missing on most of your thumbnails where your newer thumbnails which are awesome is just more visual representations of what you're talking about and less text so visually show money, visually show time, visually show blogs so that people can read the, can get, basically you want to inspire people to give a reason to look at your title. And to this day, my favorite thumbnail of all time is the yellow box and the title says, this is not yellow and it has 18 million views. And the reason for that is I see a yellow box, I read the title and it says this is not yellow and now I'm going to click on it because I know I'm looking at a yellow box. So that intrigue is what you're trying to build with text and images on thumbnails. You never want to repeat the title because people are fundamentally going to look at the title. They're going to glance, see what pops out to them and then read that title and click. That's Mm -hmm. kind of how people, you know, they go through the process of clicking on a thumbnail on YouTube. So it's never a re- repetition thing. It's more about an intriguing stop point to read your time. I will add one more thing about uh, about this. I think in this genre, sometimes people like, like to just see what's on the tin. And so sometimes I think text does work. I'm not disagreeing with you wholeheartedly here, Jeremy. I just see this a lot. Uh, but I think in the same token, there's one here, which is like how to make money online. And so the, the text text isn't necessarily used, but there's dollar signs and v- money. And I think that's always a, um, th- there's always like that bit of a clickbaity hook there when everybody puts like a big dollar value on a thumbnail and it's about how to make money. There is a certain association with that, which I think helps, but as long as you don't overuse it and then you deliver the value in the, the thumbnail. So I think generally speaking, there's some experimentation that might need going on here. For example, there's one here with like zero text uh, about a MacBook, but it is that is a bit of a departure from what I think Benji's dad's content is all about. Um, but it seems to perform generally the same as the other videos as well. But there are, there are these occasional breakout videos. And yeah, it might be a case as we often do this where, especially on like a, where you have a particular focus, but what's the, the real niche in that one? And then you have a couple which have tens of thousands of views, uh, like how to get 
uh, free money on PayPal fast. That did really well. Is there? Could you capitalize on that? And there's another. Your top two videos about PayPal. So maybe there's something telling me there. You should do a, a video series on making money uh, from PayPal. And but, I love that PayPal, like the sec second thumbnail example on PayPal. Yeah, this one here. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. You're yeah. visually showing what your title's about, and it happens to be your biggest, you know, second biggest uh, yeah. video. Well so, done. so I think elements of both of what we said there, Jeremy, uh, fit that one quite nicely. Yeah, I'm a big believer yeah. of text. I just think that the text shouldn't be a repetition of the title. Next channel is uh, NGPG. Uh, you've just cracked 1,000 subscribers. Congratulations to you. Looks to be a... Um, I always say this wrong. Is it Roblox, Roblox, whatever it's called? I, like, I'm just not connected with the youth of today. Uh, but can clearly see what your channel's about. It's specifically on this uh, uh, type of video. You probably want to keep an eye on these giveaway videos that you're doing now that we've been talking at the beginning of this uh, live stream about how those could get you in a bit of hot water with YouTube. So just be careful about this. But it seems to be, you seem to be very, very focused on this particular um, game and like how to rob everything, all codes, robbing the hello neighborhood, playing as Mad City on Roblox. All of this seems to be very much connected. I think the one thing I will say as well, just as I look at this video, when I see like all codes for uh, a game or getting scammed, I, just be just make sure that the content you are creating is legitimate and you're not aiding viewers to somehow circumvent a system like getting stuff for free when it should be paid for something to be aware of there i i'm not i'm not saying that that's what you're doing but th that's immediate thought what comes into my mind when i'm looking at these sort of thumbnails and titles uh thumbnails seem relatively strong i think maybe some need a bit more simplicity some are a bit busy like this one for example here robbing the hello neighborhood house is too much going on there so i think uh just cleaning up those sorts of thumbnails would be good but Channel focus is good. Got a thousand subscribers. Uh, could maybe have a more healthy audience. Anything to add there, Jeremy? Or do you think we're pretty much on the The only the, thing I'm going to add is from now on, I'm going to say raw blocks and not roadblocks. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, and um, uh, we were talking about emojis before. Uh, try and take, if you're going to have emojis in your titles, don't put them at the beginning of a titles because that can maybe confuse the um when youtube's trying to categorize it index it but i'm sure youtube will probably say no that doesn't matter anymore it doesn't, doesn't make any difference uh but yeah something to it's a couple of things to uh, pay attention to then all right jeremy we've got another art channel i think i uh, led on the last art channel so you're going to lead with deborah smith art here Six thousand subscribers which is awesome what can we glean from here yeah congratulations that's that's great um I would just say on your banner, the uh, text is probably too large. It yeah. probably does not work very well on mobile. And then I would add your face on the banner if possible, because um, let's just be honest, there's a lot of epoxy style channels. So having that, you know, connection with a view on it will, will really help. Um, the thumbnails are great. I, I like the quick acrylic dirty pores uh, thumbnail or the second, the basically the first three or four thumbnails in the second line are phenomenal. The, yeah, these ones here, I love these. I can just promise you right now that those probably have a better click-through rate than the, top, the, the ones from a week and two and three weeks ago. And the reason for that is it's the, it, the hero is the art. I do not I am not convinced. Obviously, we haven't looked at your back end, but something tells me the click-through rate would be higher on those versus the newer ones. Um, yep. Because the t in this case, the text doesn't... And people are going to know that this epoxy pours. People are going to kind of know the genre. So they're probably just looking at cool ways to use epoxy to paint. Um now, one thing I would do, I'm not sure how you do these, but I know a lot of people put pour in cups. So one idea I would have for thumbnails is I would actually show physically, like not just the art, but how you do it. So if you have a cup with paint coming out, show that. If you have, you know, if you're just using a paintbrush or something. So basically add the art element to these images, if that makes any sense, so that people know it's, instruction or if it's not instruction yeah um 
So like the epoxy resin sw swipe painting, I would like to see you swiping, whatever that means, <laughs> um, epoxy full screen instead of sh telling, you know, repeating the title. And I think the final thing I would add is that we were talking about, we had a, another art channel on earlier and we weren't really sure what the real specific focus of it was an art channel, but what kind of art. And I think this expertly represents how to niche down. We know it's an art channel, but it's 100% epoxy resin. It looks to be uh, or, or, or almost every single video and that, that keyword sort of appears in the titles and in the thumbnails. And I think that really helps uh, with the, with a channel that you're growing here. And I think one more thing is you might want to, I guess, audit the, the videos which really drop off. Like some, there are occasionally videos here which have like 400 views and uh, one here with 500 views. And I'm just wondering what the difference is. You might just want to um, put together the 10 worst performing videos and see why occasionally there are drop offs. Because it seems to me that it's a consistent channel, mostly like in the thousands. But here and there, there are just one or two videos that just don't work. So maybe line up all of those at once and see what's going on. And by the there. way, can you sort by most viewed real quick? I certainly can. I want to prove a point. And the pr point I want to prove is the most awesome thumbnails are also the most viewed videos. And that is yeah. not a coincidence. I it's not a coincidence that the green and gold freeform resin geode is the most clicked because it's so intriguing and so colorful and beautiful that people just have to click on it. I also want you to understand that your first nine videos have the, of the most clicked on videos and most viewed videos of your whole channel's history don't have text. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I bet, Jeremy, you were saying that, please, I hope uh, when you sort to most popular that I am right. Yes, that's yeah, exactly what I want. Because I'm that, that awesome. No, yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, uh, with Jeremy saying he is awesome, what we're going to do is take a, our second break. And when we come back, I'm going to load up some more uh, channels to audit. But we will also be taking your questions as well uh, very soon. Uh, so we'll be taking another message from our sponsor, which is, guess what? Us. Back in a couple of minutes. Does running a YouTube channel sometimes make you feel dazed and confused? Well, that's why you might need a little education. VidIQ can review your channel in seconds, 24 hours a day. It's like having your own YouTube consultant giving you all of this information. Do a YouTube search and we'll show you the stats, the value of that keyword, what's related, what's trending, what tags each video uses, and a deep dive with a single click. After research comes analysis. Our video scorecard will pick apart all the important analytics from social media to SEO, and we do this for every single video on YouTube for free. And when it comes to uploading your videos, vidIQ is here to support you every step of the way with suggested keywords, our SEO score ranking, upload checklist, and recommended tags, boosting your content to the next level. Oh, and if you think we finished there, we haven't even started. We have dozens more tools we want to show you right now. All you need to do is download vidIQ now and let us help educate you on your YouTube journey today. All right, we are back for the final portion of the uh, vidIQ uh, live stream this week. Thank you everyone for continuing to support us here. Still 160 people watching right now, which is awesome. If you are enjoying this live stream, as I always forget, and I always say live stream uh, at this point, uh, <laughs> do make sure to give us a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And uh, Jeremy, we're gonna take some questions from the audience. I'm just gonna very quickly go through some of the um, uh, super chats that we had because uh, we ha we've got some f questions here. Ash Gaming, who I think sent us 40 rupees or maybe 40 South African Rand, asked how to grow on YouTube now as a small streamer. Any suggestions for a small streamer? Are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, the, the biggest thing I would say is for a small streamer is to have like unless you're you have a reason unless someone has a reason to watch you don't go live mm. yeah, i mean good point. 
the biggest problem I see with people going live is they don't really have a reason. And if you're a vlog, then maybe that's okay. But otherwise you need to get to the point. If you're a, a Twitch streamer and you're doing video games, then just do something different. What makes your approach different than everyone else? This is where you have to know who you are. You have to embrace yourself and your quirkiness and then relate that quirkiness to other people like you. So know who you are, have a strategy and know how you're going to provide entertainment or value to someone else or don't go live period. I, yeah, I would add that um, live streams are very difficult for small channels because you usually get around about 5 to 10% of your audience joining from a live stream. And I think maybe live stream is not the platform. If you want to live stream uh, exclusively, YouTube's probably not the platform for you. It should be part of your uh, channel. Like lots of on-demand videos and then like live stream is very much a community-based type of content. Uh, Kolu, uh, who sent us $5 our way, thank you very much for that. How to capitalize on a video that does well without annoying your current subs. I would say your subscribers are fickle. <laughs> if you look at your uh, analytics, how many subscribers watch your content versus non-subscribers, it's usually... Uh, a split of at least 60, 40 to non-subscribers. So I'm not saying don't worry about subscribers, but if YouTube is giving you a reward for good content, then you should be following that line and producing that content. The subscribers who really care about you, who value you the most, will, I guess, forgive you in a sense if you're going to produce some content. Like us, we've done a lot on PewDiePie versus T-Series, and probably some of our um, viewers are a little bit annoyed about that. But we still, we have not sacrificed our normal content. I'm just working more hours to get that extra content out, but I'm still providing all of the awesome stuff every Monday and Tuesday, uh, like we do here. Uh, any anything else about that, Jeremy, or would you agree with that? No, I totally agree. Boom. Next question. I think it was from Cola, uh, Cola again. I have a big problem with losing subs every time I upload. Is this due to program due to a program on YouTube or is it people being annoyed with the daily updates? So again, this is like your maybe your audience, your topic is like changing and your audience is changing. A uh, bit of a news, um, bit of a shock uh, news here. Whenever we upload, oh, sorry, whenever we do a live stream, we lose about 50 subscribers. I know it sounds absolutely bonkers. It's just one of the ways, one of the things that happens. Um, but we'd rather give value to the 150, 200 people who are watching and care about our content than somebody just clicking at an unsubscribe button who probably is not invested in our content anyway. Again, I'm lowering the value of subscribers here. But it's all about providing value to the audience who is watching your content now and having the watch time. I think Trump's subscribers in, in that case. Anything to add there, Jeremy? I think moving forward, subscribers are going to matter less and less and less. Um, and you can see a lot of proof on this. For example, in our community posts, a lot of the people that see our community posts are not even subscribers. Boot, yeah, spot on. Good point. You can, you can see this in um, basically most of the big videos that you see on the le the right hand side you're not subscribed to those videos or those channels rather so i think as youtube gets smarter and smarter and smarter with what people want to consume subscribers are going to mean less and less and less there could be a time in the future where the subscriber count completely disappears i, I kind of I mean, with the way that you can hack subscribers sometimes with sub for sub and it's I, it's still it's still important for that first sort of question. Or like you have a YouTube channel, how many subscribers do you have? That seems to be like the the question everybody asks. But really now, how valuable is a subscriber as a number? When you sort of dig into it, what who is that subscriber? And I think that's a really important thing. And you only find that out with the content that you produce and the the feedback you get through the comments. Uh, and uh, there was one last one here, London New Bar who gave us five pounds but didn't actually have a question. So we appreciate the uh, super chat there. Uh, it, Sorry, we can't answer the question that you didn't ask. So, Jeremy, what we're going to do is we're going to take now questions from anybody. So you can ask us anything. I'm remembering to put all the transitions on this week. Uh, so, folks, this is what I want you to do. I've I've actually built a new graphic. Woohoo! Like, oh, how awesome is that? Put hashtag question in front of a question. Capital hashtag question. It helps us find the question in the chat. And we're going to try and take uh, turns in doing this. And I think, Jeremy, what... 
how this worked best was when we didn't spend too long answering a question, we just sort of gave him a super quick answer. Not because um, uh, long answers are good, but I think sometimes when, we ha when we're under pressure to answer the question quickly, we bring out our gut instincts, and that seems to be the better way to answer the questions. So here we go, Jeremy. I'm going to ask you a question, then you ask me a question. The first one comes from Technology Move. VidIQ is a how-to channel good... Well, I don't understand the question. <laughs> so that's a, All right, well, I'll try another one then. Canadian Cannabis Reviews. Uh, Jeremy Vest, is it bad if YouTube age restricts my channel? Should I start doing that myself? I would say yes, it probably is because they're going to restrict how many people can fundamentally see your content. Is If your audience is not those people, you should be fine. And if you are creating content that is not appropriate for children yes you should do it yourself so that youtube doesn't have to yeah it's going to be a difficult one as well if uh, if you're about cannabis and that is obviously a, an adult uh, topic uh, next question comes from let's do this yeah how to gain subscribers when you are getting a lot of views already bit of a difficult question to ask for that one jeremy but any thoughts yeah i mean bit of a broad one I, I would just say really quickly that um, if you have like kids or someone watching, maybe you're not going to get subscribers because little three-year-olds don't know how to subscribe. Mm -hmm. um, that could be a reason. Another reason could be that you're doing a one-off answer to a question that you only asked one time. So people don't really care about you. They just wanted the thing answered at that moment. Um, but if you are in on camera and you have personality and you're entertaining or educating people, they should be subscribing to you. So you, there may be something wrong. You may not be putting call to actions at the beginning of your content. You may not have the branding watermark subscribe. You may not have the subscribe link in your description. Okay, Jeremy, over to you. Fire some questions at me. I'm ready to go. Flexing All my right. uh, answer muscles here. Here we go. Okay. Do I, do I do reaction videos and gaming videos on my channel? Should I stick to one or the other? Should I stick to what I am doing now? Here's an amazing idea. Merge the two reaction uh, videos to gaming content. That is a, a brilliant way of building an audience. Finding two niches and putting them together uh, can really help you out. So I would try doing both of them at the same time in one video. What time of the day should I post? Okay, here's a quick tip. Uh, check your real-time analytics for the last 48 hours when you haven't posted a video and you'll see the natural, I love this word, cadence of your channel. You see peaks and troughs. When it starts, when like three or four hours before it peaks, post a video there or uh, get the vidIQ Pro tool which tells you exactly when is the best time to post on your channel. Um, how to grow a voiceover tech channel. What strategies needed for voiceover channels? <laughs> Don't, well, I don't really think the voiceover part is too irrelevant. In the tech channel industry, uh, as that was an area I was used to be in, you've got to be bigger, better, or faster. In other words, your videos have to explain things better than anybody else, or they have to explain more things than anybody else, or they have to explain things faster than anyone else, or uh, something different which nobody else has answered. So that's what I think you need to focus on in a tech channel. Keep them coming, right. Jeremy. Come on. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, Apocalypse number two is coming in. What's your thoughts about that, Rob? So we talked about this briefly in terms of uh, the, the comments. Uh, uh, comments there. If you have uh, a community uh, built around a niche, there's probably niche uh, magazines and you know blogs. And Reddit, and, if you're involved in the community. You know, Reddit yeah. and communities on Facebook and maybe LinkedIn. So activate them, create content they will be willing to share on those communities and you know, have people embed your videos on blog posts. Jeremy, question for you from Skylar, the creator. How important are channel keywords? Not important. There no. we go. I love that answer. Next question is from the Epic Gamer. Can a small channel like mine grow? Can you give me tips? Okay. So let's answer this one together. If you're ans asking such a question, then you're asking the wrong questions. It's impossible to give advice for a small channel in such a broad way. All of the tips we show you on the videos on demand and like the, I'm doing a series on how to start and grow your channel in 2019, that's what you've got to be looking at. If you're going to answer it very quickly, find a tiny 
focus, where you have a small audience, but you can really dominate and become the authority on and then build your channel out from there. I've answered that myself, Jeremy. So I'll right. give you another one. <laughs> Uh, next one is going to be a uh, question. Why does Jeremy have a static image when auditing? I'll have to answer this one. Okay. So what we do is, um, so Jeremy is talking to me on Zoom. So this is inside of tech stuff here. Uh, Zoom is like a conferencing program. And when I share my uh, screen to Jeremy so he can see what I'm auditing, uh, it would just show that shared screen if I used it. So I have to put up a static screen because it doesn't show on screen for my computer, Jeremy talking and so on. So a really boring answer to, uh, I guess, a slightly interesting question for anybody wanting to do live streams. Uh, next one is from Foul Play Presents. Is uploading more than one video a day harmful to your channel, even if it's varied content such as Let's Play and a skit? That's one for yep. Jeremy. No. <laughs> That's the short answer. Jeremy's short uh, answer. <laughs> Very short. I would not I would not do it if you're not able to be consistent. Evan Carmichael, who was on the chat earlier with almost two million subscribers, um, he posts three videos a day and he's gonna be just fine. Yeah, th I, there is a question of like velocity in terms of if right. you post a video uh, now and then another one in 12 hours and then leave it for three or four days. What have you achieved from that? You probably want to give um, you have a bit of a gap. Um, and don't put, I say don't post more than three times a day because you will only get notifications um, two channels. Uh, uh, you'll only get three notifications a day from channels. Let's take three more questions. Uh, Jeremy, I will ask you the first one, uh, which is, uh, okay, question here for Jeremy, interesting one. How long have you been on YouTube? I've been on YouTube since 2007. I've been making videos on YouTube since 2008, but I didn't start taking it seriously until 2012. Got another one there for Jer Jeremy anymore? And my the first channel I started helping with was I Justine. Oh, is there, there we go. Uh, how do you deal with trying to change your content when you sub, sub, when your subscriber base is there only for a certain type of video? I think if you make that commitment, you just got to go all in with it, and you just have to accept that subscribers may drop off, but with the new audience, you should hopefully be regaining those subscribers from an entirely new audience. And let's take one more, Jeremy. Find find one more, and then we'll answer. This that is one. a good one. Should yeah. I copy other successful videos for getting suggested? So, I mean, copy is probably if you try to copy a video from another video creator, one hundred percent, you would never succeed in doing that. It would probably maybe be I don't know, twenty percent, thirty percent similar to that content, and because you're going to put your own on um, your own. Um, your own opinions and your own style on it. Like the PewDiePie versus T-Series stuff, we just putting our own slant on it and it seems to be doing successful. So I, you're basically saying, should I follow trends? And the answer is yes. Any further thoughts there, Jeremy? Yeah, just don't copy others, but yeah, like if, don't... if something's trending and it relates to your channel, that that's the, the yeah, biggest. Yeah. A lot of oh, people make stuff that has nothing to do with your channel. That's a bad idea. But PewDiePie versus T-Series, we do YouTube analytics, and they're fighting for the first place in subscribers. Makes total sense for us. Absolutely. And that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is your Q&A uh, for this week, which leaves us with just a small amount of time, uh, as always, to do some final audits for our uh, very loyal audience here. So I'm going to try and press the right button, which is that one. And now, Jeremy, once again, I'm going to turn you into a static man uh, for our audience. So there, as you can see now, I'm sharing the screen with Jeremy, which means that it completely blanks him out. So I have to put that face on, uh, which is uh, a wonderful image there of Jeremy. And what we're going to do now is look at uh, some channels very quickly, try and give you some quick advice. Jeremy, I'll let you take this one, 64-bit dragon. What can we say quickly about this channel, how we can okay. help them? No idea what you do, so tell me visually what you do. And then I love the idea of the frames on your thumbnails. Your thumbnails mm -hmm. are awesome. Keep it up. Um, and then just make sure that you go all in on, on a few games. Don't do too much types of content. Go all in on two or three games maximum. Um, and uh, I think you're doing well. Keep it up. Yeah, nailed that one perfectly. Channel for me is uh, Mishan's Magic. Looks to be a uh, cake uh, channel, decorative cake 
like uh, making uh, over 400 subscribers. General advice I would give to you is that your thumbnails are just very busy. Here, let, let me give you an example here. I've now put up all of your thumbnails here, and if you if the thumbnails are really striking, your eyes should be drawn to them and fix on them. But here, my eyes are dotting around all over the place, looking at different colors, different text, and then I eventually sort of fall on this one where I'm looking at the food. It's like the of a hero of a of a thumbnail, and I think that's probably where you need to focus. These ones here at the top, like how to cook really yummy, healthy red sauce pasta, quick and easy. That is a lot of text in a thumbnail, and it just repeats the title. So that's something that we're always uh, against here on vidIQ when there's regurgitation going on. And I think really if your channel is about food and the channel banner has a lot of color, I think emphasize that in your thumbnails as well. Any further thoughts there, Jeremy, or shall we move on? Move on. Move on. Okay. Hope, hope you found that uh, tip useful there. The Green Fire, Jeremy, 1,000 subscribers. Congratulations. What can they do to improve their channel? On your banner, tell us what you do and why that matters yep. so that you can build a community of people like you. Right now, I have no idea what this means, but I'm guessing it's into gaming. Yep. Um, on your thumbnails, just be more consistent, have bigger faces and less text. And then on your actual titles, put more of the actual phrases people search for for a game. So um, how to blah, blah, blah on blank game. So answer questions people are having, not just making titles based on what you think is a good title, but actually answer the questions. Awesome suggestions there from Jeremy. Next channel is James86. You have 14 subscribers, very new to YouTube, so welcome uh, to the journey. It looks as if you are doing an origami uh, channel, as you say, in your channel banner. I probably want some origami stuff in your channel banner, which would help. Here, I think this is a good example of where the hero should be your origami images. Although saying that, they are still relatively clear uh, even though you've got some bit, bits of text there. But look, here we are. How to make an origami dog. How to make an origami dog. Get rid of that. Increase that. Make that big. And uh, I think an arrow pointing to it might help. Um, like you've kind of done there. But these these green borders, I just don't think are really working. So that's a, the first tweak I would make. Other than that, you've got channel focus, which is good. Keep make, it, make around like 50 videos on different origami pieces and then find out which are the best ones for your audience, whether it's building uh, origami buildings or origami Star Wars um, ships or origami animals. I think you'll find out that after maybe 50 videos. Jeremy, next channel. Simply Me Tay, 160 subscribers. Uh, wow, well, they haven't been on YouTube long, only a month, and they've already got 160 subscribers with a... Uh, what seems to be growing audience. What are we going to say about this one? You're doing great. Put yourself cleaning on the banner. Um, your thumbnails are really good. Brighten them up a little bit um, and then make your text a lot larger and less text, maybe two or three words maximum. Um, I would not do healthy meal prep and clean with me's. I would just do clean with me. So every single thing I would do if I were you is I would do speed clean with me and then the type of cleaning. And I would go make two or 300 videos about speed clean with me and the type of cleaning before you start going into halls or groceries or meal prep. Did you just say make two or 300 videos? I did. <laughs> Woo, there's a challenge for you in 2019. <laughs> uh, Agri Studios, 5,000 subscribers. Congratulations on it's your channel size. Though. It's that competitive. That's why I said that. Okay. Uh, this channel, it looks to be about agriculture, I think. Uh, so I think it's good that you've probably found a, a strong niche here. I'm looking at your videos where you have quite um, spiky view counts. Some have got 500, some have got 2,000. So I think just looking through your most popular videos and concentrating on those topics would be good. And I think there's room for improvement on your thumbnails as well. Uh, the text, I don't really think is adding anything to them. Um, I, li I, I like this one. It's just Merry Christmas with some cows. I mean, if you took out Merry Christmas text and just put a, a silly um, Christmas hat on one of those cows, I think that, I would, <laughs> that would add so much humor, uh, whether that's uh, what you want to try and promote in your channel. Um, I'm just wondering what the keyword focus might be here. 
Uh, come on, Jeremy, help me out here. I'm getting a, yeah, I'm getting agriculture, a little. Agriculture, farms, and drones. It's a huge business here in America. Right. And I think the, the biggest thing I would say is you're just missing those terms people are searching for, for drones and agriculture and farms. So try to, to make your magic phrase in every video about what people are searching for as far as farm drones are concerned. And um, do more shots of what you see from the drones. Yeah. So, um, do more aerial shots, do more things that you see. Um, and, you know, this is a huge topic. This is uh, amazing that we're already in 2019 to a point to where thousands of people are making a full-time living, uh, get, gathering data about people's farms with drones. So put that in your banner, put that in your images and just own it. Boom. Thank you for bailing me out there, Jeremy. I was getting, uh, but I'm glad to know that you have uh, expert knowledge in droning uh, on US farms. <laughs> Quiet Quest. I'll help you out with this one, Jeremy. The last one here. Uh, nearly 700 subscribers. Congratulations to you. Some really striking thumbnails here. They look beautiful. Uh, this, and this is a music channel. So, Jeremy, what are we going to suggest for Go a 24 music channel? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> Boom! Jeremy's in there uh, cutting me off there. Go 24 hours with a live stream. I like the fact that all of your videos... This is interesting. Some of your videos are like exactly the same video length, which is weird. It's not exactly the same music, is it? Uh, that's Yeah, that is weird. Why one hour, 11 minutes, 11 seconds for a lot of your videos? This I'm, could be a spinner channel. Oh, so this is one of those where it's just like aut not. automatically generated type of I scenario. I hope not. Mm. If it is a spinner, boo. Yeah, boo, boo sucks to be you type of um, <laughs> thing. But yeah, okay. Uh, so there are some good things here, but yeah, Jeremy's spotting here. Just Jeremy, just quickly explain what spinner video is for our audience. We talked about it so last week, I think. Actually, you can upload a couple of videos and then a Black Hat software program will make it different links. Yeah. Um, and automatically upload thumbnails and titles and everything. Hopefully that's not the case. And we're just kidding, by the way, if, if it's not the case. But if it is the case, we, we're not kidding at all. Uh, and yeah, I, I guess YouTube will eventually be able to maybe detect these sorts of channels. Um, they but, will. And, and then part of this new, you know, spam um, yeah. philosophy, it does cover that. But so but quickly going back, if you're not doing that, as we say, 24-7 live streaming service uh, with your music and content. And I may be putting some of these into just huge playlists as well. 10-hour playlists uh, might uh, help as well. Folks, as always, you have been an awesome audience here today on the vidIQ live stream. Jeremy, I think this might be the longest one we've ever done uh, at 1 hour 45 minutes. As always, we really appreciate your time here uh, spending it with our audience. Any final words before we do our shout outs and final goodbyes? No, it's been fun. And let us know how we can improve this for you guys in the comments below. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy's saying that uh, we may be catching a little bit of shade in the chat. I don't always have a chance to read the chat uh, as I'm talking. So if you have any feedback, leave it in the, not in the live chat, but leave it in the comments after the live stream. And I'll be able to read them a lot more easily there. Uh, if you did enjoy this live stream, now don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to VidIQ if you haven't already done so. If we didn't audit your channel today, I do apologize. Jeremy, have a guess. How many channels submitted for audits this week? 120. Oh, close. 139 submitted wow. this week. Uh, and I think we've audited a 20 there. So we'll, we'll try and get through them every single week. And you will have your chance again next week. Folks, as always, it's been an honor, and I'm shouting out the following 64 bit dragon, beauty conscious, the cruisy ways jays, camera lizard, all to play, uh, Canadian cannabis reviews, technology move. Jeremy, it's your time, turn to read out three. <laughs> Let's do this, yeah. Cavit Vora, all to play. Uh, so, so just let's recap there. Jeremy said, let's do this year with no enthusiasm at all and read out one of the channels I'd already said. So thank you for your contribution <laughs> there. Jeremy, goodbye and thank you to SB Tech Plus, the moderator as always, doing a fantastic job here. I also saw uh, Real Estate Whisperer who was in there. Uh, Diambis, uh, Beauty Conscious, uh, E and S plus 3 TV, Miss MBYT, Hersey MB. Wow, I think you're just making more and more complicated usernames in this live stream to make me try and read them out. 
Uh, Ruzga Dezori, sorry if I've said your name wrong. Wayne, Johnny, Greens and Machines. And the last shout out, Jeremy, goes to... Thinking How. Enjoy the rest of your video making day and we will see you again soon. Bye for now. Uncomfortable waves while we go off the live stream. <laughs>